video, I will be talking about what would happen if Roto Shaw started boxing. Would he become the next YouTube boxing threat, or would he be beaten to a pulp in his first match? This story was so unique and so insane to make at the same time. This was really fun, and you want to hear the full story. This is What If Roto Shaw Was a Boxer. Also, a lot of my videos aren't hitting the right people, so if you want to support and help me grow, please leave a like, comment any what if ideas, and subscribe to the channel. It's all free, and you can always unsubscribe later. Enjoy the video. It was spring of 2018, and the stage was set for Logan Paul and KSI to fight on August 25th. Everyone was excited, nervous energetic all of the above the fans were ready for this fight to go down but the people who weren't ready yet were the event organizers you see they needed to assemble an undercard and set up fights that would get people excited for the main event they already had Jake Paul vs Deji but they needed more fights to watch JJ brought up this issue with some of the sidemen during one of their meetings and it was more of a passive comment until a light bulb lit in Harry's head he thought that it would be a good idea to potentially take part in this boxing event purely for enjoyment and experience I mean how often do you get an opportunity like this so during this meeting Harry asked JJ if there was a chance that he could take part in this event and everyone in the assignment were shocked and also excited JJ said 100% there's a chance all you need to do is get an opponent maybe call them out on your channel get them to sign a contract and you'll be on your way Harry knew what he needed to do he decided to take on this mission of finding an opponent in the original timeline Harry chose Ricegum as his desired opponent to box and in this timeline he was the exact person he will call out everything went as the original did he made a video clowning him messaged him and made a diss track on him as well the only difference is that not only did Harry do all this at a much earlier time, but Ricegum actually listened this time. He had multiple back and forths with Harry in regards to how this fight would go down. However, Ricegum, after hearing all of these rules, was heavily hesitant to take this fight. And every time Rice sounded like he wanted to back out, Harry would immediately go on social media to expose him, just to put even more pressure on Rice. Rice was getting bullied left, right, and center. He was getting called names from every corner of the internet. And Rice put his foot down and asked Harry to immediately set him a contract. And right away, a contract was sent to Rice, he signed it, and the fight was immediately on. This fight surprisingly got a lot of people excited. Both fighters were extremely well known in their respective countries. They both had huge fan bases and with Harry making these elaborate videos and social media posts about the fight, it just got even more people excited about this fight. But with all that being said, it was time to train. Now the question is, did Harry actually take this fight seriously? Well yes and no. Harry went to train every day with Vidal for many hours on end. He would practice continuously, ask questions all the time, try to learn from his mistakes, spar every now and then, he did it all. He had the mindset of someone who was an actual professional professional boxer. However, the flaw with everything that he's been doing was his motivation. As time went on, the training started to feel like a chore than something he wanted to actually do. He wasn't eating healthy at all, he wasn't studying spars or other boxers in his downtime, and he was giving more of a lackluster effort every time he was in training. This started to make Vidal upset. He started bullying Harry and questioned why he was even training in the first place. Why did you take this fight? Harry said that he thought it was going to be a fun opportunity to try something new, but all this work didn't seem like it was worth it. Vidal told him that if he was willing to stop, then you should drop out of this match right now. Harry went home and contemplated whether or not he wanted to do this anymore. He contacted Ricegum asking him if he was taking this fight seriously. Rice texted him back and he said that he was taking this fight extremely seriously. He contacted a personal chef to help him cook healthy meals, he's been staying disciplined with all his workouts and he's been studying the game of boxing every time he gets the chance and trying to learn what he is watching. Harry asked him to show his progress and he said that you're just going to have to wait for the weigh-in. The body transformation that he was able to develop is something no one will expect and that he's not willing to give Harry any spoilers. Harry was just about to tell him that he was thinking about dropping the fight, but after hearing how Rice has been approaching this, he knew that this wouldn't work in his favor, and he needed to shut his mouth. He contemplated even more about his desire to continue fighting, and he talked to a Nissan Gibb in regards to whether or not he should do this. Harry knew that Gibb would want Harry to fight, but he was hoping to find a good enough reason to actually do it. Gibb told him that the future got the best of you. He didn't lose motivation to train because you weren't having fun. You lost your love for training because you were nervous. You were simply thinking of all the scenarios in the world that could potentially go wrong. You getting knocked out, or you becoming a meme, or you getting tossed around like a toy in the ring. All you thought about was the negative, and after hearing that Rice was taking this fight seriously, it just made you even more nervous. And Gibb acknowledged that this is a feeling he has as well, and so does KSI. They always fear for the worst, but they don't let that consume them. Instead, they try to combat that fear. Gibb told him that he hates every workout that he does. Do you think I enjoy getting punched in sparring? Do you think I enjoy running all the time? Do you think I enjoy eating all this healthy food for weeks on end? No, but my fear is that my opponent is doing the opposite of me. He eats healthy, and he's working out constantly, and if I give up now, I'll never forgive myself. I want to make sure that all the hard work my opponent went through went to waste and I want that feeling of getting my hand raised climbing the ropes of the corner of the ring and screaming at the top of my lungs and smiling from ear to ear and never letting that drop the money is good the clout is good but you get that regardless of whether or not you win but if you actually win you get all this euphoria and relief that you only get to feel a few times in your life and I'm not losing that opportunity he told Harry that that chance to have that feeling is there all you have to do is go through all the
this pain, and the outcome will be you feeling like a king. Harry understood what he said, and he gave it a little bit more thought. And after one night of sleeping, he woke up at 6 a.m. and went for a run. He was going to win. He wants the feeling that Gabe was talking about, to go through all the struggle and the pain just to come out as a champion. He went back to Vidal and told him that he was ready to train again. And Vidal, just like last time, put him through the ringer. But Harry didn't stop. He was constantly fearing the worst, and that is what helped him push more and more. As weeks went by, Harry started to see a significant body transformation. He started to develop muscle on his arms and a strong core as well. His roommate Calfrizi envied his body transformation and congratulated him. He even decided to go for a workout with Harry, but immediately, Freezy got tired after a few workouts, while Harry on the other hand was still exercising as if he just started. Harry knew that he was making progress, and that no matter what Ricegum was accomplishing, he would accomplish more. Even more weeks went by, and it was time for the weigh-in. Harry has not seen Ricegum's body transformation at all. He was really intrigued to see who he has to go up against in this fight. Harry went on the scale and took off his shirt for the crowd. At this point, no one has seen his body transformation other than his roommates and Vidal, which meant that everyone who was in that room saw his new body for the first time, and their jaws dropped to the floor. Everyone clapped and chanted for Harry. They were all really proud of him, and this made Harry really excited. This was the feeling that Gabe was talking about, but he knew that it was only a small piece of the pie. Rice looked at him, and he was speechless. He didn't expect him to come out like this. Besides the point, it was Rice's turn. Rice took off his two layers of hoodies he was wearing and hopped on the scale. Harry got a good look of his new bio transformation. However, there was one thing that caught his eye. There was no bio transformation to be seen. Rice was still skinny. He has no abs, no sort of muscle development, nothing. Harry was shocked. Didn't Rice say that he was training like no tomorrow and had a personal chef and all that? This really baffled him. After the face-off, Gibb pulled Harry to the side. He asked Harry if he was sure that Rice told him that he was training. Rice said that he did and he showed Gibb the text. Gibb theorized that Rice wasn't actually training and only told you that in hopes that you would get scared. And what's funny is that he did do that to you, but the outcome was the complete opposite. He thought you would give up, but you used that fear to your advantage. Harry understood what Gibb said and chuckled at the thought. But anyways, Harry went to bed and it was time for the day of the fight. Harry was in his locker room before his fight and he had headphones on his ears. He was listening to music while getting his hands wrapped and warming up. He later had to take him off in order to put on his headgear. Moving on, it was time for his fight. Harry walked out to his diss track against Rice and Ricecum went out to some random song he made. Harry and Rice both got in the ring. Ricecum looked depressed and unconfident and Harry was bouncing up and down and getting excited. The bell went off and the fighter squared up. Rice, visually, you could tell that he hasn't taken this fight seriously. His stance alone already had some loopholes. Harry remained calm and decided to take the first few shots against Rice and he landed them very well. He clearly looked like he did damage. Ricecum tried to fight back but he had no technique with his punches and it looked like he was just flailing his arms. Harry was able to dodge them. There was one minute left in the first round and Harry was able to land a barrage of attacks on Rice to the point where he started to wobble, put his hands down, and walk backwards. He got caught in the corner and Harry was just attacking Rice's body over and over because it was so exposed. Eventually, that one minute quickly turned into 30 seconds and after all the punishment Ricegum took in that short amount of time, the ref got in between them and called off the fight. Rotoshop beat Ricegum. All his fears he had translated into hard work and confidence and as a result, not only did he win, he got the euphoria Gibb was talking about. He went to the corner, climbed up the ropes, and screamed at the top of his lungs. He was so happy. In Harry's post-fight interview, he was asked if he wanted to call anyone out after winning the match. And after realizing that he has some boxing potential, he decided to call someone out. And that man was Joe Weller. Joe was in the crowd when he heard this and talked smack to Harry from the crowd. Both of them wanted to make this fight happen immediately. However, this is a story for another time.